guys, I'm Esther and I'm back for another sewing tutorial with Lowland Kids. In this video, I'll talk you through step by step how to sew up the dolman tee. This is the kids version, but there is actually a women's version available, which is almost identical, just of course, larger. And there are a few variations that you can choose when you purchase this pattern. There's like a long sleeve, short sleeve, and also a cute little gathered or ruffled sleeve detail. I couldn't resist but make a sort of mini and an adult version of this style. Um, and it turned out being far too big for my bub. But I took a few pictures anyway, um, just so that you can see how cute it turned out. This is a great beginner pattern. So if you're not too familiar with knits and stretch fabrics, this is a great place to start. You'll need to get familiar with using a stretch stitch like a zigzag or an overlocker. Um, but don't worry, I'll try and talk you through it as we go. You can also use a variety of fabrics for this. I'm going into summer here in Australia, whereas if you're going into colder weather, you'll definitely want a thicker fabric like a cotton terry or even a fleece and this dolman pattern can be worked in all different fabrics stretch fabrics that is so you can have a play with that depending on what season you're going into like i said this is such a simple but really basic staple pattern to have and you can tweak it in so many different ways that i can't wait to sew up a few different variations myself let's get started so these are the different views that you can choose from when you purchase the pattern. Um, there's a long sleeve, the short sleeve with a cow neck, and then there's a flutter or gathered sleeve that I'm going to do in this tutorial. It also has a curved hem, which I'm going to talk through because that can be a little tricky. These are the stretch fabrics that I chose to work with. So the striped one is quite a light cotton jersey. And then I chose to do a contrast neckband in this gray cotton ribbing. As I mentioned, you can also choose heavier fabrics, so that's totally up to you. I cut out all my pattern pieces, and then this is what I had. These are my frill pieces, which are going to be attached onto the sleeve once they're gathered up. I have the front and back pieces and the neckband. Then for one of my tees, I just had a regular hem with no add-on piece, and for the other one, I did a curved, so this was the piece for the curved hem. First up, I'm going to serge the short edge of my neckband, the shoulder and the side seam of my front and back pieces. And I'm also going to do the short edges of my sleeve frills or my sleeve gathers and the short edges of my curved hem pieces. Because I'm working with a stretch fabric, I need to use a stretch stitch. So that means using a serger or an overlocker or the zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. If you've never done that before, just Google how to use a zigzag stitch for stretch fabrics and that should come up with a few tutorials that'll talk you through. Next, I'm going to attach the neckband. So I'm going to take my neckband piece, which should be now one continuous loop. I'm going to fold it in half, concealing that seam on the inside so that you can't see it. And then I'm going to match up this seam towards the back of the neck of the garment. I'll pin it in place and then gently stretch out the neckband to fit the neck hole and pin as I go. For reference, my garment is still inside out and I've placed the neckband inside so it sits nice and neatly and the right sides should always be together. Now you can serge that together and it should look like this when it's finished, nice and neat. You do have the option of top stitching on the right side if you like. I tend to not do that because I'm a little bit lazy, but go for it if you prefer to have top stitching. If you're doing the curved hem option, we're going to attach that in a similar way. I've flipped my curved hem piece out the right way and I'm going to place that on the inside of the hem of my garment. So again, the right sides should always be together and these pieces should line up really nicely because the curves should fit together. Once we've serged that outer edge, it should come together like this. And then I'm also going to serge that raw edge before we turn it up so that it stops curling on itself. Then I'm going to give the entire hem a really nice press and that should make it a lot easier to turn up this hem facing piece and get it aligned nice and flush, pin it in place so that we can hem it. I ended up leaving my sleeve hems raw so I didn't finish them, but if you would like to finish yours, press them up and hem them at the same time that you're doing the top. If you have a cover stitch machine, this is the best time to use it. Otherwise, you can use a twin needle or a zigzag. If you're a beginner, I would suggest starting with the zigzag to hem this. It will be easier than trying to wrap your head around using a twin needle. 
please don't be tempted to do a straight stitch here because you will regret it later on. The stitches will simply break because your knit fabric needs to have stretch in it. So just go with a zigzag. If you're a beginner, it will be well worth it. Note that if you chose to do the long straight band for your hem instead, you can insert that the same way as we did the neck band. The same technique applies also for the cowl neck option and also the sleeve bands and even the gathered sleeve option. But before we insert the gathered sleeves, we need to gather them. There are lots of ways you can gather things, but in this tutorial, I'll show you the way that I find the easiest as a beginner sewer. The piece that we're going to gather should already be one continuous loop because we joined it before. So now we're going to use a straight stitch on the longest possible stitch length. So for mine, I think that was up to a five and we're going to sew about six mil from the edge all around that piece. As you get back to the start, leave some extra length on your threads before you cut them. Then you can easily pick up one of the threads, either the bobbin thread or the front thread, it shouldn't matter, and start to pull that and it will gather the fabric. I should note that I was taught to always do two rows of gathering stitch, um, so it will make it much easier to gather because it will sit a lot flatter and be easier to attach to the other piece later on. So maybe take the time and sew another line of stitching right next to the first one. Then when it comes time to gather, you need to pick up one thread from the top line of stitching and one thread from the bottom line of stitching and then pull both of them at the same time to gather really evenly. This is the sleeve with only one line of gathering and to be honest, it was a bit of a nightmare. So I do very much recommend doing two lines of gathering and it will make it a lot easier to insert that into your sleeve. To attach the sleeve, we'll use the exact same method we used to attach the neckband. So I still have my garment inside out and then I'm going to pop that frill on the inside of that sleeve hole. Make sure the right sides are together. I will also align the seams of both the garment and the frill. So I'm going to line them up and they should sit under the underarm. And I will pin that in place before adjusting the rest of the frill to the armhole. Honestly, this took such a long time because I only did that one line of gathering when I really should have done two. <laughs> it took forever to adjust those gathers to get them nice and even um, and they were all over the place. So definitely do two lines of stitching and it will make your life so much easier. I will also note that in this example, I'm doing the adult dolman style. And so I actually made this gathering a lot longer than the child's one is. So when you're doing the child's dolman, the gathering shouldn't be as intense. If you do want lots and lots of gathering, then this is what you're going to have to deal with. Um, but the pattern that comes by default doesn't have as much gathering and it should be much more manageable to pop that into the armhole. And once you're happy with how it's all sitting, just serge all the way around. When you're done serging, it should look like this and we are just about done. You might find that the second line of gathering might actually be visible because you might have done a bit wider than six mil and that's okay. You just need to unpick those stitches. Um, to get mine nice and neat, my gathering stitch was definitely showing once I finished. So I just got my unpicker and undid that stitch. To finish things off, give everything a really nice press. And like I always say, you probably should press along the way every time you sew a seam. But if you're lazy like me, I just do it all at the end. And voila, your dolman tee is complete. So there we go, I hope that this pattern was helpful for you. I had a lot of fun sewing up this style and I hope you did too. Um, if you had any questions or things that I might have missed or skipped over, feel free to leave um, questions or things in the comments and we will do our best to help you out. If you're new to sewing or have any other questions, there is a great sewing community on Facebook. So look up the Lowland Kids Sewing Thread because there's so many there are so many people that can help you out with any things that you get stuck on there as well. And you'll see so many photos of other people's projects that might get you inspired for what pattern to do next. So do check that out. And also, of course, jump on the Instagram page. So at Lowland Kids, um, you can find lots of inspo there as well. So I'll see you in another video soon.